What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to talk about some pro tips for Citron's base. So I'm going to start off with the basics, how to create a Citron's base from scratch in Vital. And then what I want to do is show you a really cool technique for getting the perfect base sound. However, the latter technique does require Bitwig. I'm sure you can figure out other ways to do it using multiple channels and stuff, but it's just so simple in Bitwig. Anyway, without blabbering too much, let's dive in and have a look. So it dawned on me that I don't actually have a video which is just the very basics of how to create a Citron space from scratch in Vital. I do have a masterclass which kind of does explain things a little bit, but I just want to explain things, you know, very basically how to do so. So what I generally do is set the phase reset over here down to 0%, and that way we just maintain the exact same waveform every time the bass is triggered. So I also want to just talk about a thing that I often do with bass lines in Vital in that I find that sometimes the envelopes in Vital are not as accurate as they want to be. However, that being said, the LFOs are bang on if you just adjust the smoothing down to zero. So what this means is that we can actually set the LFO to work in an envelope mode like this. That way we negate the kind of inaccuracies that I find that Vital tends to have. So what I want to do is I want to draw in envelope that we would expect to have with a bass sound, you know, something with a plucky transient and then a bit of a rounded body like this. OK, we want to set this to one over 16th because that's generally the length that we're going to have with a Citron's bass line. So here what I want to do is turn this level down and put this LFO on here. So the reason why this is such a powerful technique is that now, no matter what happens, the note will always reduce down to a zero volume at the end of the 16th before the next note is triggered. So these two little steps, the phase randomization and just making sure that the amplitude of the sound hits zero before the next one starts, those two things I think are the most important things about a Citron space line. Next, what we want to do is we just want to make sure the attack is at zero. By default, you'll see that it's actually at 0 0.1 or 0 0.001. Uh, or just below that. So what we want to do is we want to set it to bottom zero. And that maintains the very snappy transient that we want for a Citron's baseline. So this is a little bit more advanced. I have explained this in a previous video, so I'm not actually going to explain why. But what I like to do is I like to use an upward ramp saw wave instead of a downward ramp saw wave. So we can actually just draw that in in the waveform editor like this. Then what we want to do is we want to set this down to zero. So now we have a pretty snappy sound. However, it doesn't have the contour of the filter sound that we need. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to set the transpose down by minus 12 over here in the advanced. You can do this over here by holding shift and mouse wheel. But by doing it in the advanced panel, it just makes things a little bit easier to read. You know, for those maybe beginner users who are using your patch, maybe you're going to share it with friends. They don't have to understand too much about what's happening here. They can kind of just, you know, understand that it's it's a bass sound, so it's lower in frequency. Does that make sense? Cool. So we got the sound that we want to begin with. Now what we want to do is we want to look at carving a contour using the filter. There's various different types of filters over here. I prefer just the analog or the digital over here. Uh, for bass lines, I don't tend to use the dirty, the ladder, or the diode. Those are really nice for leads. However, let's just see what both of these sound like over here. So again, like I said, because the envelopes aren't as snappy as I would like them to be, we can actually just draw in envelopes again like we did with the volume using an LFO over here. So let's just apply this to the filter over here. So what I also like to do is I like to turn this key track up to 100%. Rather than adjusting the filter frequency to taste, what this does is it then maintains the fact that the ending frequency will be the fundamental uh, or the actual pitch of the note. And that means that we'll never get to a point where the filter closes beyond the fundamental. So the sound will always be audible depending on whatever modulation we apply. This is a little bit more advanced, but bear with me. So we can change the modulation amount over here to increase the amount of modulation that gets applied to that filter. And we can also change the curve over here and we can also make it even more of a kind of drastic curve by adding a point like this. So 
So the other bonus about using an LFO as opposed to the envelopes is it allows you to create these very creative kind of curves to carve in that exact kind of contour that you want for your bass sound. Another cool technique is to combine multiple envelopes to create the filter contour. One that is kind of smoothed and then one with a much sharper contour, like something like this. Let's just set this to envelope. Are these all envelope modes? Yeah, turn the smooth down and then apply this here as well. So we wanna make sure we don't drop it in the center like I just did here. We wanna drop it next to this. So it's two individual modulations as opposed to this one modulating this one's modulation amount. Awesome, that's sounding good. Okay, so you see how much control you have when you do those two individual modulations for the filter instead of just the one. Now what I wanna talk about is getting the perfect mix between the kick and the bass. So here I wanna show you a quick example. The kick is peaking at minus 12, and the bass is peaking at, at minus 13. But together, they're peaking at minus eight, which is a problem, because we want the kick to be the loudest thing in the mix. Oh, at, at least we want the peak of the mix to be that of the peak of the kick drum, generally speaking. So what's happening here? Uh, if we look at an oscilloscope over here, uh, this represents the actual waveform of both the kick and the bass summed together. You'll notice here, there's a giant peak because it's the sum of the kicks fundamental and the first bass note. They sum together and that creates a much higher amplitude than the singular elements. So sidechain is a really nice way of being able to quickly fix that. However, it doesn't always work. So here, for example, we have a sidechain that cuts the first note completely, and then it goes about 50% to the second note. Third and fourth notes are then full amplitude. However, this creates a little bit too much of a galloping sound. So we kind of lose that first bass note a little bit. Check this out. And it's still not uh, peaking at the point that we wanted to. So we may even have to adjust this amount even further down to something like this, like 25% or so. But at this point now, it's peaking at minus 12. However, that gallop is way too audible in my opinion. I guess this is a stylistic thing, but I prefer a kind of baseline which has a bit more of a roll to it, a bit more of a flowy baseline than one that is very kind of offbeat groovy like this. In terms of the phase alignment of these two elements, I guess we could tighten it up with the phase alignment. However, that being said, that's not gonna really adjust the amplitude of that first note as much as we actually need it to. So I wanna show you a really cool technique that I figured out. This one is Bitwig specific though. So what I wanna do is I wanna group the vital, just the, just the vital alone by uh, control G. Then we can right click this and say convert to instrument selector. Then I can control and drag the vital. So now we've actually got two instances of Vital and you'll notice the second one has this little moon icon over here. So that means it's actually disabled and we can enable this instance by modulating this parameter over here. And the cool thing about the selector as opposed to other ways of layering it or multiple channels is it actually disables this Vital from the DSP when it's not being used. It's very CPU efficient doing it this method. So what I wanna do here is I want a way of modulating between these two layers, where this layer or either one of the layers is gonna be playing for the first half of the one over four, and the other layer is gonna be playing for the second half of the one over four. And now we can go into this vital, so I'm just gonna enable it over here. So in fact, what we can do is we can actually name each of these layers. So let's call this no fundamental. And I guess you guessed what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove the fundamental from one of the layers. So for those who don't understand the like harmonic theory and what a fundamental is, I'm gonna show you in Vital real quick. So let's just jump in here, open Vital. And the saw wave is the representation of all of these frequencies spanned along upwards like this, right? 
these are all sine waves. And if we reduce the first frequency over here, we're actually removing the fundamental from the sine wave, from the overall saw wave. And by doing this, we're increasing it all the way up to an actual sine. So what we can do is we can actually remove the fundamental like this. And now what we're hearing is the bass line without the lowest bass note, which is generally the note which is resonating from the tail of the kick drum. So what this means is that there will be no phase cancellation between these two instances, between the kick and the bass, because the bass doesn't exist within that frequency which the kick is. So it's a pretty interesting technique. And we can actually go a bit further and remove the next, uh, the next harmonic as well, the first harmonic. Not all the way, just a little bit. I find that this helps to create a very nice mix between the two. So here, for example, these ones, which is the full frequency bass note, are gonna be playing in the main two notes and the no fundamental note is just gonna be the first one. Can you hear that difference between the two? They sound absolutely identical. However, the one just lacks in that sub frequency. Okay, are you guys following? So you're probably wondering, hey Dash, why aren't you using an EQ to do this? But that's because using an EQ will often introduce pre or post ringing, or it'll introduce phasing, depending on what type of EQ you're using. Thus, what would happen is the two bass notes would not sound the same. Um, yes, they, the one wouldn't have bass and the one would have bass, but they wouldn't sound identical. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing this. So using actual harmonics to mix the fundamental out on the first note is incredible. So you're probably also now wondering how do we modulate between these? Uh, Bitwig has a really cool thing called steps, which can be loaded as a modulator over here. And we set this to four steps like this. What we wanna do is we wanna have it like this. And in the second quarter or the second quadrant, we wanna set this to modulate like this. So now what's gonna happen is if we set it like this, it's gonna modulate down like that. So let's check out the oscilloscope with the kick disabled and let's have a look at what's happening now. So of course there's still that LFO tool which is being applied and that still makes it a little bit too drastic of a gallop. So now what we can do is we can actually start reducing the LFO tool, so we still get the volume of that first note. That doesn't sound too drastic, does it? But look how much space and amplitude and headroom we've actually freed up in the waveform. So let's now put the kick back in and let's check out what the mix of these two channels sounds at. Awesome, that is about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.